Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and I hope you're all doing well. Today is the day that 5% of you have waited for, and that is the ultra-wide benchmarks on the RTX 3080 Founders Edition graphics card, which absolutely nobody on the planet can buy unless you are a bot being run by a disgusting scalper and then trying to sell those cards on eBay and then being screwed over by another bot who's putting in bids of $50,000 and then never paying for them. So, yes, probably you can't buy this card right now, but maybe in two months, you know, you'll be able to, and then this information will still be around for you to peruse. But right now, at least we're going to be taking a look at the 3080 up against the 2080 Ti in ultra-wide 3440 by 14, uh, 3440 by 1440 resolution, which, uh, as I mentioned before, the reviews, uh, and then a lot of people are on a review, they're like, where's, where's the ultra-wide numbers? You promised ultra-wide. I like, yes, I did promise them in a dedicated separate video, and that is what we're here to do today, because seemingly not a single other YouTuber on the planet uh, loves the ultra-wide community as much as I do, so we're going to get fired into those numbers in just a moment. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry, because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds, and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen, and all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. Okay, so as far as test setup and testing methodology, everything it was the exact same as the initial review. Nothing has changed here whatsoever, but I'm going to go over those numbers again for anyone that might have missed it. But if not, there'll be a timestamp on your screen right now if you want to just go ahead and jump straight ahead to the gaming benchmarks for 3440 by 1440 on the 3080 versus the 2080 Ti. Uh, Founders Edition, but for those of you that missed that, here is the test setup. I was running on an i7-8700K at 4.8 gigahertz, which a lot of people ask me why I'm using that instead of a 10-900K, and I think it's because a lot of people usually get a CPU, they hang on to that for a few years, where maybe they might upgrade graphics cards a little bit um, less frequently, but CPUs tend to hang around for a while, and 6 cores, 12 threads is also extremely common uh, for the AMD platform on Ryzen 5, so... 8700K is what I decided to use here because it's not really going to bottleneck our RTX 3080 at these high resolutions. For RAM, I'm using 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z at 3200 megahertz, as I said at the start. Both cards are Founders Edition running at stock settings. 1000 watt, 80 plus gold rated power supply to not limit us in power in any way on the 3080. And I was running the press driver from NVIDIA uh, 456.16 for testing methodology. Every game here was tested at their maximum or ultra preset. So whatever the game calls that, if it's called very high and that's the highest preset, that's what I used. If it's called ultra or ultra high, doesn't matter. I used the highest preset available in any given title at ultra wide 1440p resolution. Ray tracing was also used on any titles that supported it, which I believe were three of the nine titles that I tested. And those were put up to the highest available setting possible. DLSS was not used uh, because I wanted to test at native resolution, but of course that option is there in, I believe, every single one of these ray tracing titles as well as F1 2020 if you do want to utilize that. for So, so for titles that the uh, ultra-wide you know, ultra performance is maybe not as good as what you were hoping for in ray trace titles, you can always know that DLSS is there as a viable option, which continues to get better and better. It's barely undiscernible from... Uh, native resolution now, if not better in some cases. And uh, yeah, it works really well. So there's really no reason not to use it. But I, I believe people want to see native testing. But, you know, if you believe other one way or the other, let me know down in the comments below. Do you prefer native testing or utilizing DLSS for when benching, uh, benchmarking video games? And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the data, which is really what all of you guys are here to see. We will start off at the average FPS and then go into the 1% lows. As you can see here on the graph with all nine titles uh, that we tested here, both of these cards uh, extremely capable uh, for ultra wide 1440p. Really, uh, the only situations where um, these cards struggle in any way whatsoever is in ray trace titles, even something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, very demanding. Uh, it's also where we saw the closest uh, gap between these two graphics cards, 67 FPS on the 380 versus 61 on the 2080 Ti. Battlefield 5 with RTX, we saw some nice gains, over 20 frames per second gained 
in that title. And that is honestly starting to seem like the best optimized ray trace title out there as it is running extremely well. And every time I've tried it on the 3080, whether it's at 4K, ultra wide, 1440p, even with that, it doesn't need DLSS. It runs really great and it looks phenomenal. 86 average FPS here on the 3080, 64 on the 2080 Ti. Borderlands 3, very demanding title. It has one of those options that you could just toggle. I believe it's the fog option and gain like 15, 20 frames per second, even though it's running great on the 3080 already at 85. Um, you know, for the 2080 Ti, you might want to drop that down still because um, you might see some dips down below 60 on that. But you toggle that one option and boom, your frame rate's probably going to be the same as what the 3080 is when it turned completely on. Control with RTX, um, with the 2080 Ti, extremely, uh, you know, hitchy and just uh, very slow running. But on the 3080, it was 55 average FPS, very playable. But I would still go ahead and use DLSS, especially since that has the 2.0 version and runs very well. F1 2020. Really not a point of even talking about it. It's kind of ruining the graph again, just like uh, in the initial review, which is why I ended up removing uh, Rainbow Six Siege. If you're interested in Rainbow Six Siege and you missed the initial review, the game runs obscenely well. You can run it on either of these cards at literally any resolution and you're going to be fine. The 2080 Ti can probably even do it at 8K and just be laughing all the way to the bank. So ridiculous frame rates in Rainbow Six Siege, which isn't tested here, but F1 2020 runs well and scaled incredibly on the 3080, gaining, uh, I think it's the hugest, biggest gain we saw here, yeah, uh, for any of the titles that we tested. Metro Exodus, another game with ray tracing that's going to struggle immensely on either one of these cards. You would definitely want to use DLSS if you're insisting on using ray tracing or just disable ray tracing altogether in these numbers are probably going to double. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Vulcan API, running very well here, 86 average FPS on the 3080. I did make some adjustments to how I benchmarked this title um, because when you run the in built-in benchmark, there's loading screens between the different scenes, which can kind of mess up the numbers one way or another. So I decided to eliminate that and then just use the last scene where uh, Arthur is running through the streets and having a shootout with the cops. So that's the only scene that I actually used for uh, the benchmark to get the average FPS and 1% lows on Red Dead 2, but running very well on both cards, but obviously better on the 3080. Shadow the Tomb Raider with RTX ran very well on the 3080, getting 77 average FPS, but you'd probably want to use DLSS for the 2080 Ti. And then rounding out our list is the Division 2, which can run either one of on, on either one of these graphics cards very well. You're not going to really have any issues playing that game maxed out at 14, uh, 3440 by 1440. But 3080 getting well above 60 frames, you're almost definitely not going to see any uh, frame drops below 60 FPS in that title playing it at DirectX 12. And here are the 1% lows for all of the games that I tested. <laughs> And of course, 1% lows, as always, is taken from the 1% low of all frame times. And then you take that number, you divide it and do some basic mathematicians. And then you get a number that is representative of a frame rate. So this isn't to say that this is like the exact bare minimum. It's the 1% low of all frame times, which frame times, honestly, in more cases than not, can impact your experience uh, even more so uh, than a frame rate. So that's how frame times are captured. There's tons of content out there if you want to learn a little bit more about frame times, but there are the 1% lows if you are curious to go ahead and see those. So that is all of the data that I have got for you guys on the RTX 3080 at ultra wide. Obviously, conclusion at the end of the day, extremely capable card. This is probably going to be that sweet spot GPU if you're looking to pick up a 30 series card when you finally can and play at this ultra wide resolution. But the 2080 Ti, still very capable uh, for ultra wide. I can't stress that enough. Still a very strong card. And with what we know about the upcoming 3070, which is going to be $200 less uh, than the 3080, it's probably going to run exactly the same as the 2080 Ti is here. Like, li like literally exactly the same, maybe within like five frames per second. That's a prediction. But we've already seen some leaked benchmarks on that card and we know that the advertising on that was pretty much true it's running the same as a 2080 ti so if you see these numbers here and you're happy enough with the 2080 ti figures and you know you're running on a 10 series 900 series card or whatever and you're thinking about upgrading to the 30 series these numbers from the 2080 ti should help you decide if it's worth waiting for a 3070 or if it's worth you uh grabbing a 3080 when you can 
And if you want to spend the extra $200 plus, depending on if you get an aftermarket board card or whatever. So hopefully these numbers have helped make your GPU decision uh, a little bit easier on this generation. Obviously though, as I said at the start, 30 series, uh, 3080 card anyway, the only one available right now, extremely difficult to find. And I would expect that to be the case with every single one of these cards when they launch. I think we're probably gonna see a repeat next week when the 3090 comes out, which I have still sadly not received for testing. I'm, I'm, I'm not really confident that I will since they're kind of treating them like Titan cards and um, with the Titan cards, like pretty much J Linus and Gamers Nexus get them and nobody else. So uh, not exactly confident that I'll be getting a 3090, but still very happy to have a 3080, absolute beast of a card. It was a nice upgrade for me to my 2080 Ti and I'm very pleased with it for 4K gaming. And there goes uh, the guy cutting the lawn. So perfect note to go out on ending this video. Uh, be sure to grab yourself an RTX spatula shirt if you have not already, because the meme is almost dead. And then why would you want a dead meme t-shirt? So I'm gonna get out of here. Rest in peace, Harambe forever, though that meme will never die like that gorilla unfortunately did. Hope you guys had a good day and enjoyed and appreciated the ultra wide uh, reviews here. And of course, this video is in ultra wide. I should have mentioned that at the start. I meant to do that. Didn't. My bad. I'll probably have to put text on the screen or something. So yeah, if you didn't already watch it in full screen or something, because it's going to actually play in ultra wide. So I'm going to go and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Ciao.